Hi, today we're diving into the exciting world of algebra. What is algebra anyway? You're probably familiar with arithmetic. In fact, algebra also follows the rules of arithmetic like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Arithmetic is all about straightforward calculations, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing numbers. Algebra, on the other hand, takes the game a little forward. It introduces a new element, the element of the unknown. When you were learning arithmetic, the only thing that was ever unknown was the answer to the problem. Like 4 plus 9 equal what? The answer is unknown till the arithmetic operation of addition is carried out, and we get the answer 13. But in algebra, when something is unknown, we give it a symbol in its place. So in this case, we have the unknown, and it is given the popular symbol X. The symbol is usually just any letter of the alphabet. Most commonly, we use the letter X. So in algebra, if we don't know what the number is, then we use a symbol instead of it. Coming back to the example, while in arithmetic, we write 3 plus 9, and we will write the answer once the addition is done. However, in algebra, we would write it like this. 3 plus 9 equal X. The X is a placeholder that stands for the number that we don't know yet. What we have here is a very basic algebraic equation. Before we dive deeper, let's learn the language of algebra. Variables are letters that stand in for unknown values, for example, x or y. Constants are numbers that don't change, for example, 5 minus 3 and 10. Coefficients are numbers multiplied by variables, for example, in 3x. The number 3 is the coefficient of the variable x. Expressions are combinations of variables, constants, and operations like 2x plus 3. Equations, on the other hand, are mathematical sentences stating two expressions are equal, as in the case of x plus 2 equals 5. What's an equation? Let's break it down. An equation is like a scale. It's all about balance. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. For example, x plus 3 equals to 7. To solve this, subtract 3 from both sides. x plus 3 minus 3 equals 7 minus 3. And simplifying, we finally get x is equal to 4. Let's set the ground rules for algebra. These are your tools for cracking the code. Do the same thing to both sides. Think of equations as scales. Keep them balanced. Combine like terms by simplifying where you can. For example, 2x plus 3x equals 5x. Watch your signs as negative and positive signs matter. Minus 2 plus 5 is very different from 2 plus 5. And finally, follow the order of operations. Remember PEMDAS, parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. An equation is just a mathematical statement that two things are equal on both sides. An equation says, the value of the left-hand side is equal to the value on the right-hand side with a sign of equality in between two sides. In this case, our equation is telling us that the known values on the left-hand side 3 plus 9 are equal to what's on the right-hand side, which is the symbol x. So instead of saying 3 into 4 plus 2 is equal to what, we can write 3 into 4 plus 2 equals x. Doesn't that look neat? Now your mission is to figure out what x is. But usually in algebra, the equations are rearranged, not quite easy. So instead of writing 3 into 4 plus 2 equals x, it is rearranged as 3 equals x minus 2 whole divided by 4. It's like math's version of a detective story. Except here, we're finding missing numbers instead of searching missing people. And that's why in algebra, you are usually given an equation in a more complicated form to make it more interesting and challenging. Let's visit some important rules about algebraic symbols. The first rule you need to know is that the same symbol or letter can be used in different algebra problems to stand for different unknown values. Like in one equation, x plus 2 equals to 6. Here the value of x comes out to be 4. But in another equation, x minus 1 equals to 12, where x equals 13. So one symbol can be used in different equations. 
But one symbol cannot have two values in the same equation. Let's see. If x plus x equals to 6, this means that there are a lot of different numbers whose sum can be 6, like 2 plus 4, 1 plus 5, or 3 plus 3. But if the first x stands for 2, then the other x has also to stand for 2 as a rule. It cannot happen that in order to get the answer 6, we give first x the value of 2 and the other x is given the value 4. Thus, in this equation, the value of x equals 3 only. If you wanted symbols to stand for two different numbers at the same time, you would need to use two different symbols, like A and B. So, no matter how many times one symbol is used, it will carry the same value in the same equation, right? Let's move forward. So, we have learned that in one particular equation, one symbol cannot have two values. How about two different symbols having the same values in the same equation? Let's figure it out. Let's say you have the equation a plus b equal 2. What could a and b stand for so that the equation is true? Well, if a equals 0, then b has to be 2 for the equation to be true. Or we could switch them around. Now a equal 2 and b is 0. The equation is also true. But there's another possibility. If a equal 1, then b is also to be 1, right? So even though a and b are different symbols, and would usually be used to represent different numbers, there are times when they might represent the same number. In algebra, b is what's called a variable because its value can vary or change. In fact, in this equation, both a and b are variables because their values will change depending on the value of each other. In arithmetic, all addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division have the same status meaning that they have symbols of plus, minus, multiply, and divide. And we carry out these operations once we see these symbols. However, in algebra, multiplication gets some special treatment. In algebra, multiplication is the default operation, meaning by, instead of writing a times b, you can leave out the time symbol and just write a, b. So once you see no operator between variables or coefficient and variables, then you just assume they're being multiplied. In short, multiplication is implied. However, while well, you can't actually multiply A and B till the time their values are known. The main advantage of this rule is that it makes the equation kind of neat with less clutter and easier to write down. For example, instead of this, we write A, B times C, D equal 10. Let's see what 3A means. Since the coefficient and variable are right next to each other, therefore multiplication is implied, and we can say 3 times a. However, this is not in case with numbers in algebra. How would you write 2 times 6? Here, 26 doesn't imply 2 times 6. In fact, 2 times 6 is 12, while 26 is a two-digit number having a value of 26. So in order to multiply two numbers in algebra, you still have to use the multiply symbol, or unless you use parentheses. While parentheses are used to show grouping in math, you can use them to show multiplication. So let me put it this way, parentheses are used to group things, but whenever you put two groups right next to each other with no operation between them, guess what operation is implied? You guessed it right, multiplication. So if you see this, then it is implied that the sum of a, b is multiplied by the sum of c and d. Likewise, 4 times 5 can be written as shown, so that it is not confused with number 25. While it may seem a bit odd to have only one number in parentheses, but that's perfectly okay in maths. Solving equations is like peeling an onion. You work layer by layer to uncover the answer. Here's a classic example. To solve 3x plus 2 equal 11, we subtract 2 from both sides, and we get 3x equals to 9. Now in step 2, we divide both sides by 3. And there you have it. The answer is x equal 3. Okay, so we've learned that algebra is a lot like arithmetic, but it has values or variables that we need to solve for. Moreover, the multiplication sign is usually not shown in algebra, because as it is the default operation. You can just assume that two things right next to each other are being multiplied. Okay, now we will see what are the common mistakes while solving algebraic equations and how to avoid them.
Firstly, nobody is perfect, and mistakes happen. Here are a few common ones to watch out for. A common mistake while solving algebraic equations is forgetting to flip signs. When multiplying a negative, remember, minus 3 into minus 3 is equal to plus 3. The second most committed mistake is skipping steps. Always write out each step to avoid errors. And yes, during calculations, mixing up variables happens. So if you have both x and y, keep track of which is which. Well, algebra isn't just about numbers and letters, it's a way of thinking and finding the unknown in the form of variables. It teaches you to break down problems, find patterns, and think logically. These skills go far beyond math class and will serve you throughout life. Where do we need algebra in the real world? Actually, algebra is useful for describing or modeling things in the real world. It's a little hard to see that when you are just looking at all these numbers and symbols on the page of a math book. But it's a lot easier to see when you start taking algebraic equations and plotting the values of variables on a graph for a solution. Graphing an equation is like using its different solutions to draw simple lines and curves that can be used to describe and predict things in real life. Not all equations are created equal. Let's meet a few special ones. Linear equations are the most commonly used equations. They form straight lines when you graph them. These sorts of equations could help you describe the slope of a roof or tell you how long it will take to get somewhere. The quadratic equations is another class of algebraic equations, which can be used to describe how a ball flies through the air or predict the growth of a population. So algebra is used all the time in fields like science, engineering, economics, and computer programming. I hope you are now clear about the basics of algebra. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more educational stuff.